Welcome back to another episode of Word Wednesday. I'm your host, Paige Goodger, and as always, we have Vix Weir. How you doing, Vix? I'm great, Paige. So our word today is bond. James Bond. <laughs> so as always, I'll go into the definition and um, talk a little bit about bonds and who uses them, some attributes of them, and why the market is so lucrative and uh, kind of corrupt right now. So with a bond, you're essentially buying the debt of a corporation or government, making interest on the money that you're lending these people, and then hopefully at the end, getting all of the money that you lent out to the company or the government back. So you're making money and it's a safer investment. I'm going to be talking about the bond attributes. So with a bond, it, there, it starts with an issuer and that entity is the entity that has borrowed the money. So this can include the US government, states, municipalities, and corporations. And then there's the bond holder and this is the person or entity lending the money. And then there's principal, which is the amount of money borrowed by the issuer. The principal is divided into units, and those units are called bonds. And so the That's face, exactly it. That's exactly <laughs> it. So the face value or the par value of a bond is the price of the bond or amount being loaned. So let's say if the face value is a thousand dollars, you would be lending a thousand dollars. And then there is the coupon rate. And this is the rate of interest that the lender is going to be receiving from the bond. And it's the annual percentage of the par value. So let's look at an example. If a company issues a $1,000 bond with an interest payment of 5%, the company will pay the bondholder $50 per year. And then at the maturity date, which the maturity date is how long the bond is issued for and the date the principal needs to be repaid after the bond is issued. And maturities usually range from several months to as many as 30 years and over. Right now, I think Disney and Coca-Cola have a 100 year bond um, wow. currently that's, that's still, that is still open that needs to be repaid. Um, so for our example earlier, if a company issues a $1,000 bond with an interest payment of 5% at the maturity date, the lender would receive that $1,000 back plus the interest that they made each year on that 5%, so the $50 per year. So those are all key terms around bonds that I thought were the most important. So let's, let's take everyone through how a bond would work if they've never been exposed to a bond or been in this system. So a corporation needs a ton of money, like a lot of money that you can't just go to the bank and say, hey, I need a $20,000 loan. It's like billions of dollars, right? So then the bank creates a bond and the bank now loans the amount of money that the bond is worth to the corporation seeking a lot of money. And then from here, investors are going to purchase the bonds that the bank has made. Bonds are usually um, divided up into $1,000 increments. And the investor is going to make the coupon rate that we talked about earlier of that bond for however long the term of that bond says. So let's say the coupon rate is 5%. That investor makes 5% on however much the bond was worth, $1,000, $50 for the maturity date, which is 30 years. And then at the end of that term, when the bond becomes mature, the investor would receive the par value of the bond back. So the um, initial value of the bond back, which is then paid by the corporation seeking the loan. So that, those are the kind of like ins and outs of what it looks like to have a bond created and then be an investor um, in bonds and how, how you would make money off of investing in bonds. So Vix, how, what do you think about that definition? How, how does that work with the Road to Ruta definition? I, I think that's, that's perfect. On the Road to Ruta, we think about where's the criminality? The problem now is nobody has clear title to the bonds. The DTCC is supposed to keep track of all this, 
which is the, uh, the, the entity that clears all transactions, mm -hmm. but they aren't. There's, there's so many financial transactions that use bonds as collateral for derivative transactions that they've lost track of who owns what. So you'll have multiple owners for the same bond. And the only thing that can be done is the Fed to, to buy, the, buy all those bonds from them, which they're doing right now. They're buying mm -hmm. literally trillions of dollars worth of bonds and then holding them because they don't really care if they win or you know, make or lose money because they're the Fed. They can create it out of thin air. Well, what happened last year is everybody starts saying, hey, wait a minute. A lot of these bonds, even the U.S. treasuries, are owned by several people and pledged as collateral in different places. Back to our word rehypothecation. They've mm -hmm. been rehypothecated. So now we have the same bond with multiple owners, multiple collateral pledges. And all of a sudden in September, everybody stopped trusting the bond market. So the Fed comes in and says, hey, we're the Fed, we'll buy anything. We don't care if we lose money because we can print money. And that's how bonds come into play into, uh, into the road to Ruta world. It's complete fraud. It's complete criminality being covered up now. And I don't know how we're going to get out of this other than the Fed buying every single thing that's not nailed down. And I think if they even try to do that, which they are right now, you're going to see gold and silver and cryptos go crazy, which I'm real excited about right now. So this brings me to my first question is who uses bonds? So from what I could find is that bonds are used by companies, municipalities, states, and sovereign governments to finance projects and operations, and also um, big businesses or corporations, because sometimes businesses need more money than banks will offer. So bonds are a way for companies to raise more capital. And then with governments, if there's like a new road or a new park or something to like beautify a city, a bond will be created. So you might be asking, why do people buy bonds if it's so corrupt? And it's generally considered a safer investment than stock of the same issuer. And this is because bonds are considered debt and not equity. So if a company goes under, the company is required to pay back the bondholders before they pay back their stockholders. So this is one of the reasons why people will typically hold bonds over stocks. It's a safer bet. It's not as volatile. Many governments issue bonds that pay interest free from federal and state income tax. So that's another reason why. So bonds are on the safer side of investments, but they also carry a lower return rate. So depending on that coupon rate or the interest rate that you'd be making, you know, it's, it's usually hovering somewhere around 5%. Then depending on how the economy does, that can, you know, drop to like 1.5, maybe raise up to seven. Why invest in bonds, <laughs> you might ask? That type of investment is considered a fixed income security. And with a fixed income security, no matter how the company does, how the economy does, there is a fixed rate of return. So you will continue receiving payments no matter how the company does or the economy. Um, as long as the company stays in business and lives yeah. up to their obligations. Yeah, as long as they're in business. But even if they're like doing poorly, you would still be making money, unlike stocks where you would not make any money if they were like doing poorly, but still functioning and running. When deals are clean and people do a good, honest job and everybody knows what's going on, it's great. That's what America is supposed to be, but it's not anymore. It's not clean. It's very extremely dirty. Nobody knows who owns what and they have to get bailed out every single night by the Federal Reserve. This is ridiculous. We need to stop this insanity and, and get back to something that has some at least uh, pretense of a free market because the Federal Reserve is not free market at all. There's nothing about the Fed that is free market. An entity that can create money from thin air, by definition, abuses a free market. So yeah, things are screwed up. Yeah, and you, you can feel that. Like when you go in to go do something at the bank or if you need money to get a house or whatever, it's so tricky and it's like, Every, every single turn is sticky and tricky. And that's like number one for me, just not even with 
you know, banking or anything, but in life, if it's tricky, if it's sneaky, if it's, you know, it just doesn't have a right, that right feeling. People have put things in place to make it tricky. And that isn't the, that isn't the real world. That's not how good things feel. That's not how humanity feels. It's humanity is never tricky or sticky or anything. So just if, if you guys have been feeling that, if you've encountered that with the financial system, just know that it has nothing to do with you. It's people who made this system corrupt and who keep profiting off of this corrupt system. That's why we need to end it is because they don't care about you, but I know you guys are all people that care about each other and care about humanity. So that is why we need to bring the system down and uh, end all this criminality. Um, I, I agree, except we don't need to bring it down. We just need to stop supporting it. It'll bring itself down. All we have to do is stop rigging the market and stop supporting our banking system. And they will fall apart because of the weight of their own criminality. It, to us, it, it's the easiest job in the world. Just back out and say, hey, no more, no more bailouts. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an ugly thing that we're in, and there is no easy way out. But there, there is no easy way out to keep things the same. The world has changed. We'll never go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do we want to go? Move, how do we want to be moving forward? Do we want to be based on a sound monetary system with sound dealings with people, a complete destruction of the derivative market, get that out of here? And, and move forward based on merit and what you do and the businesses you build and the people you affect in your life? Or do we wanna move forward fixing the same damn problem year after year after year, decade after decade, century after century? I say we, we start fresh and all it would take from humanity is no more bailouts. It's yeah. that easy. No more bailouts, everyone hear that? No more bailouts. <laughs> So uh, a quick recap on bonds, <laughs> talking about bonds. Yeah. Um, a bond represents a promise by a borrower to pay a lender their principal and usually interest on a loan. Bonds are issued by governments, mun municipalities, and corporations. The interest rate or coupon rate, principal amount and maturities will vary from one bond to the next in order to meet the goals of the bond issuer, which is the borrower, and the bond buyer or the lender. Bonds are units of corporate debt issued by companies and secured as tradable assets. A bond is referred to as a fixed income instrument since bonds traditionally pay a fixed interest rate or the coupon rate to debt holders. Bond prices are inversely correlated with interest rates. When rates go up, bond prices fall and vice versa. And bond dates, or sorry, bonds have maturity dates at which point the principal amount must be paid back in full or risk default. And right now the bond market is so corrupt because of rehypothecation and derivatives um, acting in unison with the bond market and just muddying the waters to where no one knows who owns what. And we have the Federal Reserve buying back bonds that they help create with these big banks. And it's just this big, dirty, messy situation with all of the bonds right now. And yeah, I, I feel like I recapped everything we, <laughs> we talked about. <laughs> it's not great. It, absolutely. Basically, a, the bond market is a big cluster blank. Cluster blank cluster equals blank. bonds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we will wrap up there for Word Wednesday. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in again and all of your guys' support. And thank you, Bix, for coming on and uh, helping me explain the ever elusive bonds to everybody. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, shh, I am jinxed. Well, guys, we will see you next week. And thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Bye.